In an age where Chelsea are spending £5 million on 18-year-old strikers and maybe £20 million on uh, Danish unknown goalkeepers, should we be going for Man City players Edison and Alvarez, who are both available on the transfer market? Would we feel like we're just going to get another Raheem Sterling? Or is this the way to go? Hmm. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, friends. Really, I do hope that. Yes, all over the news, all over the ruddy football news. Julian Alvarez, £60 million asking price for top Chelsea target on Football 365. The Athletic long been writing about Edison at Man City. He wants to leave. Speaking to it's Al Itihad, a Saudi club. He's only 30, I think, for a goalkeeper, which is not old at all. I think Chelsea should be all over Edison. We'll speak about Julian Alvarez, but I, you guys, I've made my position very clear on goalkeeper. If we can sign a big boy, we friggin' do it. We just do it. And I said just this morning when I spoke about Jorgensen that like, I'm okay with signing Jorgensen and I'd rather sign him than not sign anyone because of my lack of faith in Rob Sanchez. Just where I am. But I was sort of joking, like, there's no big boys out there. There's no serious, you know, serious footballers, goalkeepers out there. There is an Edison. Look, he's a bit he's a bit of a knob, Edison. He has the odd weird moment where he runs out and, like, murders forwards. But he's also an amazing goalkeeper. I know he's not the Brazilian number one. That's pr primarily because Alisson... I think Alisson's the second best goalkeeper in the world. I think Courtois the best. Makes me feel sick when I say it. It's just where I'm at. And then in the top five, you've got you know, like Mag Magnon, Oblak, and Edison. Do you know what I mean? That, off the top of my head. Donnarumma was on fraud watch for a while, but he is good. Um, but look, make no mistake. Edison has won how many Prems? Four Premier League titles? Um, possibly five? He's really, really good. He's amazing at passing. Um, uh, Moresca would ruddy want him. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about um, Julian Alvarez as well. So strap yourselves in. Thank you for joining me. As always, road to 200,000 subscribers, subscribers, which is uh, sensational stuff, really. Um, if you want to be a part of that, do consider subscribing. Hit the bell if you choose to subscribe, and I'll thank you in the meantime for dropping a like on this video, you lovely little person. All right, then. So let's... Let's move on to Julian Alvarez in a moment and let's carry on speaking, talking about Edison because here's the story. He, he he wants to leave. He wants to leave Man City. I get it. He's won the treble. He's won the, the, the four peat, I think, uh, four in a row. Um, and the idea is if he goes, they won't replace him. They'll just use Stefan Ortega. Uh, by the way, I'll take Ortega. Whichever one you don't want, I will take it, Chelsea. Give us either. I will take them. Um, Guardio, the playing a bit coy he doesn't know but the truth is i'm um, just skimming the athletic here i was al nasa uh spoken to him is this just al, al nasa or was it al Etihad as well but um city's asking price for edison is 50 million pounds i would pay that bro i'd i'd rather not pay loads of money on a striker with a risk and you know go with nkunku go with jackson Go with Mark Yu, who I think looks really exciting. I can live without signing a striker, legit. We've even seen Cole Palmer play a false nine. Like I can, I can, I can dig it, right? But I think it would be so much better to just get a goalkeeper who can stay in goal for four years, just four years, while we make Chelsea good again. Edison is young enough to be around for like four years, and he would be worth. Uh, that money, in my humble opinion, he really would. Um, they, but they, Man City don't want to let him go easily. There is obviously a chat here about he's got a bit of an attitude problem that he doesn't. Uh, he's he, there's stories about his like ego, like he didn't like how <clears throat> he was being criticised for not making a save, and it suggested that Ortega would have made the save. He seems like he's got a worryingly fragile ego, but I I don't care. <laughs> Like I said, it seems like such a desperate and dire situation with the goalkeeping market. If Edison becomes available, uh, for, for especially especially for the football Moresk is trying to play at, at Chelsea, it's too good to turn down, I think, personally. Like, if you said to me, Jan, Edison, or Alvarez, you can only sign one. I sign Edison. I sign Edison and, like, the aforementioned strikers I spoke about. And we will speak about Alvarez in a moment. 
But, um, yeah, the idea is if they do let him go, they'd probably prefer him to go to Saudi and they would obviously promote Ortega and that would be it. They wouldn't, they might bring in a new number two, um, and that would be it. They wouldn't, they wouldn't spend a lot of money and it would be fun. Um, Yes, here we go. Here's that story. I'm just citing off the athletic here. Edison was affected by the praise. Oh my god. Yeah, no, this is it. This is the other way. I got it the wrong way around. So Edison was affected by the praise Ortega received for his fine one-on-one -on -one save to thwart uh, Tottenham's uh, Son Hyun Min in the penultimate match of the season. Uh, that moment, four minutes from the end of the match, has understandably been described as a title-defining save. Had Son scored, they probably would have earned a uh, point and maybe Arsenal would have gone on and won the title. Ortega's fine spread eagle save sped City a huge shot. Guardia, Guardia fell back and as uh, Son went, ran through. Yeah, I remember Guardia was like, on the floor, wasn't he? Uh, anyway, Ed Edison um, and it, it parts of the praise largely from supporters included a suggestion that Edison himself would not have saved that. See, that is fragile. If you, why do you give a crap about that? Excuse my language. Why do you care? Just don't shake it off. I mean, come to Chelsea. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> It is worrying when, like, egos, like, are so fragile like that. Like, don't talk to me about that. I'm the best. But I feel like the goalkeeping situation is so dire at Chelsea that if we can drop £62 million, rising to £88 million on Mikhailo Mudrik, um, just just buy Edison. I know he's not a 14-year-old from Peru or whatever we own to these days, but, like... And I'm, be I'm being sort of, you know, silly and you know, jovial and churlish or whatever there. I do generally subscribe to large amounts of the project and in the investing in youth. Yeah, great. I do understand it in theory. But this kind of opportunity, I feel like to have someone like that in goal and, then, you know, build a strong defense in front of it. I literally the whole, I'll be like, I don't want to gas this up. And look, he can be a bit of a so-and-so this goalkeeper and he's you know probably gonna be leaving his prime but i don't I, I'm, I feel so strongly about a goalkeeper that if you put someone like edison in the chelsea goal and then like, have a settled defense in front of him with like um you know whoever of our, of our good defenders that we've got and they settle down and we got settled fullbacks and the system's good defensively i'll be like the sky's the limit <laughs> you know we've got we can play out the back we can you know feel safe uh, in terms of shot stopping, he can definitely play the football more rescue once, and you know, we're good, baby. Would he come to Chelsea? Maybe. It sounds like he wants to leave Man City because um, the Ortega thing, but also, also, say it quietly, I do wonder if there's something going on at Man City. And I don't mean like the charges against him, well, I do mean the charges against him, but I don't mean it so directly. I mean, players know Pep's going players know that the charges are coming and it's just this sort of stink around the club um you know, even if they get cleared there's just this you know lingering is there gonna and there's gonna be more leaked emails apparently from the guy from der spiegel who hacked the emails there's just this constant oh, i can't be asked for this like constant noise and no guardiola and you know kdb's probably only gonna be one more season as well like i feel like the times they are a changing about ruddy time you ask me um, and I wonder if there's a bit of that, a bit of that as well. Um, speculating, of course. I would massively be very keen on Edison. What do you think on that? All right. Enough of goalkeeper. Man City set 60 million asking price for Alvarez. They've slapped 60 million quid uh, on the asking price for Julian. Julian? Julian? Is it Julian or Julian? Because I used to say Julian, and there's so many different pronunciations. I'm just going to call them Alvarez. No, I think it's Julian Alvarez. <laughs> I don't freaking know, bro. He's angling for a move away as well. Everyone wants to get off that sinking ship. I mean, they have won <laughs> the sinking ship. That's just won four Premier Leagues in a row. Um, Alvarez moved to City for £14 million from River Plate. See, that is the kind of signing that Blue Coat, the Chelsea owners, are trying to think, you know, that's what they're, you know, us spending between 12 and £25 million for all these teenagers uh, from South America. They, they're wanting to get their own Alvarez's out there. Do you know what I mean? Uh, January 2022. He's only been there 18 months. That's wild. Is it January signing as well? He has 36 goals and 18 assists in 103, appearance, 103 appearances. It's worth mentioning a lot of those appearances he has played a wide or even deep like attacking midfield as opposed to his preferred and desired position centre forward. But still, that's still, what is that? 44. That's 54 goal involvements 
um, in 103 appearances, which is strong because obviously you'd you'd probably lose a few of those assists and put more into goals had he played where he wants to play. And he he is he's small, he's diminutive, he's not a big man getting crosses. But I don't think we'll be doing that at Chelsea. I think he's the kind of profile that would work generally. Um, he's grown frustrated at his lack of game time, game time at the Etihad in large part due to the arrival of Erling Haaland. And I think this is game time in preferred position because he's played a lot of games last season. Uh, that focused chiefly on the departure of... Oh, sorry. It's, it's referencing an athletic article about the departure of Edison, which we've already spoken about. He's been heavily linked to a move to Saudi, although he should be linked to Chelsea as well. Uh, detailed uh, Alvarez's desire for more minutes, whether at City or more likely elsewhere Mm -mm -mm. apparently they want 60 million pounds and roughly 17 million pounds in add-ons jeez that's a lot huge huge huge. that would be for 63 million pounds profit (laughs) wow wow um chelsea also may struggle to stump up the funds and are in the market for a new striker to compete with nico jackson and they've identified alvarez as a good option according to a report last month also being referenced here on football 365 julian alvarez is a priority for chelsea with the aim of strengthening their offensive rotation well he certainly fits that Profile of players that can play in multiple positions in the front line, which we keep hearing players talk about, which we keep hearing Maresca talk about, and indeed just journalists. Chelsea want the uh, versatile, positionally versatile players. He's that. Uh, Man City's Argentine striker has proved his worth, and Chelsea want him to compete with Nico Jackson for the starting spot up front. The arrival. Does he want to go and compete with Nico Jackson? I mean, he'd probably rather compete with Jackson than compete with Haaland. In that sense, he probably backs himself to play more. Um, and, you know, Jackson will play on the left wing. Haaland won't. Although 60 million is a lot given Chelsea's concerns in the Premier League with PSR rules, given the lack of top strikers on the market and their huge success in signing Cole Palmer from Man City last summer, it doesn't seem like a huge outlay for someone with Alvarez's quality and record. Yeah, I said in the intro about this Raheem Sterling sort of flop, dare I say. I- I'm not like... A sterling apologist, but I'm not a hater, but it, it you know, probably wasn't the best signing. Um, forgetting about Cole Palmer, who very much was the best signing. Um, Barcelona also to be keen, but they're friggin' broke as well. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they've got the Robert Lewandowski thing as well. Um, Alvarez is currently at the Olympics, uh, having already played in the Copa America, something City allowed in order to placate a frustrated player. Something that we didn't do with uh, Enzo Fernandez, but we still managed to get some drama out of him, didn't we? Ugh. Um, all right. Julian, Julian, Julian Alvarez. Uh, yes, very... Yeah. I'd, I'd, yeah, I mean, I'd be very happy with it. Of course, it would be a very exciting signing. Um, like I said, if we had 60 million to invest, I would put it in Edison. I'm not saying, I'm not sure either of them would come to Chelsea. I even read something about um, Alvarez wanting a hotter climate than Manchester. Well, London is technically a hotter climate than Manchester. Very, very slightly. Less rain. Um, nicer place to live. Sorry, guys, if you're living in Manchester. Um, yeah, man, uh, I would be excited. How could you not be excited about Alvarez signing for Chelsea? It would be an incredibly exciting signing. He's he's pretty Galactico, isn't he? He's he's won all everything, club and country. You know, World Cup, Copa Americas, might win the Olympics. I haven't imagined. Look at that, yeah. Um, trebles, you know. I mean, the only thing he hasn't won is any of the Europa competitions. Come to Chelsea, mate. We'll start you off with a conference. Eh? Um, but it might be different, you know. I don't know. I look. I would take either of them. Ultimately, I like. I've always liked this sort of money ball idea of finding value everywhere. I know it's not very Chelsea. Chelsea historically have been Abramovich, dick swinging money, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the, the game's changing. The landscape's changing. You can't do that anymore, really, with the PSR rules. And um, there's something satisfying about spending 40 million and getting a, a Cole Palmer is worth more than double that now. It looks good. It feels good. Like, you know, I, if we spent 80 million, I mean, there would have been rights had we spent 80 million pounds on Cole Palmer, you know, when we did. But like, had had we done that, you'd be like, yeah, it's expensive, but what player we've got, you know. Um, it feels better that you spend less on him. 
it feels good that we've got value out of Malo Gusto and, you know, maybe we've, you know, Renato Vega and, you know, Nico Jackson's great value. And you, you, it's not, it's, it, it's not, it's not cool to spend a lot of money. It means you're just mugs. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I like the idea how we're finding value. Esteval William, Kendry Pius, South American es- experts think it's the most exciting thing ever that two of these guys are going to the same team in the Premier League, no less, in Chelsea. So amazing. Well done. Well done, Bluco. That's good. Happy with that. Do you know what I mean? But I, there's still got to be space for taking an opportunity and getting like, someone like an Edison in. Like, he's not being directly linked to Chelsea. I just think we should be going for players like him. What do you think, though? As always, I put it out to you guys in the comments section. Do leave your thoughts, feelings, emotions, musings, etc. in the comments. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And I do hope to see you back here on the channel soon. Peace.